Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of GeoMarvel Live. This is Dan Sletton, a solutions engineer with GeoMarvel. Today I'll be introducing you to the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. We'll talk a little bit about what it is, how you can use it, and how you can nominate your own GIS content to the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. Esri states that the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World is an evolving collection of ready-to-use global geographic content provided by Esri. It includes imagery, base maps, demographics and lifestyle, landscapes, boundaries and places, transportation, earth observations, urban systems, oceans, and historical maps. Now the cool thing about the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World is although it's provided by Esri, much of the content is provided by users like you and myself. Now I'm going to be demonstrating this in ArcGIS Online, but if your organization is utilizing ArcGIS Portal, you can also consume the Living Atlas content within your web maps. If your ArcGIS Enterprise Portal has access to the internet, your organization administrator can configure it to access these ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World content. If your portal is not connected to the internet, your administrator can still publish a set of ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World as rebound relators directly to your portal to be used in maps, scenes, and analysis. So now that we know a little bit more about what the Living Atlas of the World is, let's talk about where you can find it and how you can use it. Now this demonstration is going to be done at ArcGIS Online, but if your administrator has enabled access to Living Atlas through your portal, you're going to find these contents in the same spot. From the home page in the white banner at the top, we're going to click content. And on the next page in the blue, all the way to the right is the Living Atlas. And as you can see, there's over 10,000 items available for you to use within your web maps and other projects. So that can be a little daunting. On the left, there's a few different filters you can use to categorize these items. Categories, regions, item type, different tags, location, and status. I find the easiest way to find information you're looking for is just by searching the topic of the project that you're working on. So for this use case, we'll search for hurricanes. 28 different items have come up for us to be able to utilize and explore to potentially add to our own web maps. One thing that can be noted is these different icons underneath the items. These green check marks, those are authoritative and recommended by Esri. Blue check marks are Living Atlas and it's actually Esri curated content. So as you can see, Esri has provided these layers for us to utilize. But if we go down a little further, We've got NOAA, we've got individual users, and um, we have different organizations that also supply these content for us to be able to utilize. Um, so let's take a look at the active hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons layer. This one's provided by Esri. So say you want to utilize this in a, in a map viewer. The easiest thing to do is just go ahead and open in map viewer. That will instantly add it to a new web map. And as you can see, now these are active hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons. So you can see off the coast of Vietnam, there is some activity. Elsewhere, not so much, which is a good thing. So let's say you are in a web map. You had a bunch of your data, a bunch of layers. You're just about to be done and you want to incorporate some of the Living Atlas material just to enrich your web map and provide some background or secondary information. Another way to add Living Atlas content to your web map is to go add layer. And once you get in here, you have a few different options in this dropdown. You got my content, my favorite, my groups, organization, ArcGIS Online, and then Living Atlas. And we're going to do the same thing as before. We're just going to search for our topic. Here's a layer we've already added, active hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons. So let's add another one that's been provided by Esri, recent hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons. Click the crosshairs, and that automatically adds it to your web map. So as you can see here, these are all recent hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons that have been added to your web map. It's already been visualized for you, the data is up to date, and all you have to do is add it to your web map and utilize this data. So now that we better understand what the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World is, where you can find the contents, and how you can add the contents to your own web maps, let's talk about how you can add and nominate your own items to the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. To nominate your content into the ArcGIS Living Atlas, it first needs to exist as an item in ArcGIS Online. Now that item can be a layer, can be a web map, scene, application, pro project, and utility. When an item is nominated, it is scored by the completeness of the item and its metadata. So let's take a look at and talk about a little bit about what that means. We'll use the active hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons layer that we've been using as an example. So go to the item details page you'll see that a lot of information is being presented to us. And this is a requirement in order to be nominated into the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the world. 
The first section that's a requirement is the summary section. Now the summary section really describes the item or the feature layer that is available in ArcGIS Living Atlas. And then in the description section down below it is really where you wanted to expand on the who, the what, the where, the when, and the why. It's a great spot to explain your organization, your purpose, as well as the data and how the data was compiled and any information about the data or the application that is nominated. You can explain the data source, the update frequency, scale resolution. Perhaps you're using terms that aren't readily known to the public. You can provide a glossary section and any sort of revisions or any additional information that you want to provide about your item. This is a great spot. In addition to the summary and description, thumbnails also required. Esri recommends a large image size for this, about 600 by 400 pixels. And I like to think that the thumbnail should be pertinent to either the item that's nominated or your specific organization. In addition to the thumbnail, the description section, and the summary section, another very important detail is the tags. Now tags are very, very important in order for users to be able to find your data. When a user searches for your item, it's going to search for these tags. So you want to be very broad and you want to kind of cover a wide range of different topics that your item covers. So for instance, this one is Esri, NOAA, NHC, hurricane, typhoon, cyclone, weather, tropical, forecast, storm risk, earth observations, and many others. The more tags you supply, the more likely that your item is going to come up in a search by an end user. Esri recommends at least three tags, and the words demo, copy, test, and eval are discouraged. In addition to the tags, another section is the credit section. Now this is a good spot if you worked with an outside client, a different organization that either helped you compile the data or stand up the item and make it available to the web. This is a great spot to kind of call out your partners. And then in addition to that, at the bottom, there is a terms of use section. This is a good spot to let people know how your data can be used. If you don't want people to use it in a commercial sense, this is a good place to call that out and how they can contact you if they do want to kind of negotiate with you and figure something out to utilize your data moving forward. In addition to these sections, a few other details are required in order to nominate your item to the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. For that, we'll take a look at our item in our ArcGIS Online that we use in a different demo, our Tesla Supercharger locations. So check out that on GeoMarvel Live if you haven't yet. The first thing that they note is that the item needs to be shared publicly. So in order to do that, share, and you make sure it's available to the public, which this is. In addition to that, another setting that needs to be enabled is delete protection. And finally, in addition to delete protection, you need to utilize HTTPS protocols over HTTP. In addition to the item detail requirements in order to nominate your item to the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the world, you also need to fill out your user profile. The Hurricanes layer that we have been using is supplied by Esri. Let's take a look at an organization outside of the Esri scope. Here we have an item that was supplied by NOAA. And we take a look at their user profile page here. We have a bio, we have all the different groups that are involved, and we see any other items that they've had nominated to the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the world. This really helps to portray this user as the official user for your organization. You might want to put your logo, an email, anything else that helps your user profile stand out as this is the authoritative official user account for this organization. It's a great section to let others know who created the item, how to contact you. So you've got your user profile filled out with your bio. You've got all the required information filled out on the item detail page. But luckily, Esri also supplies us with a little tool that will help us identify the completeness of our item detail page. Now this is the Tesla Supercharger Locations item detail page and on the right hand side you'll see an item information section. If you click learn more, it'll provide a summary for you on items that you might be missing. For instance, they recommend that we add a summary, add a description, add more tags, and add terms of use. So we're not doing a very good job of getting this item ready for the ArcGIS Online Living Atlas. But if your item looks more like the active hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons layer, you're ready to nominate your item to the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the world. In order to do so, you're going to go to livingatlas.arcgis.com and in the gray banner there's a contribute section. You're going to nominate your content and an Esri curator will review your content, provide any suggestions, and once you and the curator come to an agreement that the item is ready to be available in the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the world, your item will be available within minutes. Now, after your item is available in the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the world, 
you still own the item. So it's up to you to maintain that item going forward. Esri recommends to keep the quote living aspect of ArcGIS Living Atlas in mind when you're contributing your own items. Thanks for watching this session of GeoMarvel Live. I hope you learned a thing or two about the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the world and are potentially considering adding your own content to the constantly growing collection. As always, please feel free to like, comment, share, or ask any questions you may have in the comments. Be sure and subscribe to our GeoMarvel Live channel so you don't miss any of our latest content. Take care.